people, LP2000, right back at you with another video. Yes, welcome back to Leslie Chambers Comics Reviews on behalf of Summit Kaiju. And today we're doing another X Plus Fig review. And it's not the one you probably thought I was going to do if you watched my last video. Now, in my last video, I said that I will be taking a look at the X Plus 30 centimeter favorite sculptor's line, Gosel 1962 figure. And I will. And it's coming. Matter of fact, it will definitely be the video review after this one. But instead of going to 1962, we're going to take a little detour. We're going to take a little detour to the year of 1984. And today we're taking a look at the X Plus 25 centimeter Godzilla 1984 from the awesome, just epic film that started the Heisei Godzilla film series. Godzilla 1984, The Return of Godzilla, or how we know it better here in the United States, Godzilla 1985. And as you can see, I have the beautiful figure here, but there's one thing missing. I don't have the box. And there's a story behind that, you know. Um, but just, just to give you an idea of what the box looks like, you know, it's 25 centimeter, um, total large monster series boxes. You've seen them before with the window display, red, blue, 54 Godzilla. That's it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> um, but yes, I got this loose off of eBay. So yeah, this actually is going to be a good eBay story. Cause I normally go on, e uh, I, I rag on eBay about people not doing the right thing on eBay. And most of that is true to a certain extent. Um, but this actually, actually is an eBay success story. I get to that in a few seconds. Um, stats about the figure. It was originally released 2010. Yes, this figure at the time of this recording is eight years old. And he has not seen, seen a reissue yet. Now, the third centimeter has been reissued at least twice as far as I know. He's been reissued through Diamond and he was reissued as a darker paint scheme, light up, dorsal plate, Rick Boy um, exclusive figure. Um, but this figure has not seen a reissue. This is the standard. The Rick Boy came with a small mini Super X um, which is a cool, cool representation of the flying method that fought Godzilla in the film. Um, but I'm just happy just to get the figure, you know, because I've been eyeing this figure for a while, but I've been hearing people online or on various Facebook groups throw, throw, um, labels at it like it's ugly, it's not super accurate, it's something off about it, which I can understand to a certain extent, but still, I'm an 84 fan through and through. Now, let me dedicate this review to the biggest Godzilla 1984 Fan I know, my brother from another mother, Brutezilla, Brut, uh, Butch Bollinger. This video go, goes out to you, my friend. Uh, he's the biggest 84 fan I know. And like the 62, I have a soft spot for the 84. Because um, this is one of the earliest Godzilla films I saw growing up. And I have such a soft spot for this figure. Excuse me, for, for this design. So when it came to the figure, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try and go after it. And actually, you know what? Let me give a huge shout out, huge shout out to Gojira 851 too. Uh, Matt Jacobson. Um, cause he scored one not too long ago at G Fest, and I didn't know about it until after the fact. Now, mind you, when I hung out with him at G Fest, I'm gonna try to make a long story short here. When I when I hung out with him at G Fest, we kind of missed each other here and there. Now we hung out, but we wasn't we weren't together like 24 seven, you know, during the course of the event. So I really didn't know what exactly he got, you know what I mean? And then when I came home and I saw his haul, he said he scored a 25 centimeter 84. I was like, wow, that was awesome. Let me just say this right now. Had I known there would have been an 84 there, I probably would have gone after it. You know what I mean? But it went to a great home. It went to a great guy. And I couldn't be even happier. So, happy. so congratulations. Go to your 851. So, fast forward a couple weeks. This one popped up on eBay for a relatively good good price. And there was one on Monda Rock a for a little bit more expensive. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try and go after one or, the, one or the other. So, I decided to go the eBay route. Now, the one on Rocket is still online there right now. So if you want one of these, it's the standard. Go on Monte Rocket right now and you have to score this. You know, it's not super, super expensive, but it, it, it was a few more dollars more than what I paid for this. Now, that's the thing, eBay. And once again, I know I have talked crap about eBay. I've not been too kind or favorable when it comes to eBay. But let's just keep it real. There are a lot of people out there that are horrendously overpricing these figures. They are taking advantage of people's lack of knowledge or being a newcomer on what these figures really are valued. And I don't think that's right. And I'm going to call them out on it every single time because it's not right. It's hurting the hobby. It's hurting people that really want to get in and, you know, have fun and do the right thing. So to take advantage of people's ignorance over stuff like this is wrong. And it, it, it is so wrong on so many different levels and y'all should stop doing that for real. But 
This one was online for a relatively good price. The fact that this was online, because once again, like I said, this was re, uh, this was re, this was first issue in 2010, and it's not seen a reissue. So these guys don't pop up online that often. And when you do, you're gonna spend what I've seen in the past: five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars. I'm sorry, I'm not doing that. I'm not paying that much for for, for a figure. You, you know, maybe you know. I mean, the the, the, the gigantic shin was expensive. Um, but I'm not paying that much for a 25 centimeter. I don't care what it is. So this was this was on eBay for a rel relatively good price, for a really, really affordable price. And I put a bid in for it. And a few days later, I was able to put my, um, I, I was able to win the auction. Um, because I was thinking every single day between the time I put my bid in until when I actually won, I was like, you know what, somebody's going to come in and scoop it up, you know, from under me. And I wasn't going to fight somebody tooth and nail for it, you know. I mean, I wanted it, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't trying to spend more than I wanted to spend to get it. And plus, I had the Monterey Mono option. Um, but, once again, this is the eBay success story. I was able to get it, and I was able to score it, and it was a, it, it was a great acquisition. In a year that I have seen great, great acquisitions for me personally, with the 25 centimeter crawling for Ron, the Oxygen Destroyer base that came with the with the gigantic burning Godzilla. You know, I was able to score some great, 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 great things this year. And um, you can add this one to the list. So yes, that's the backstory about me having this figure. You know, it only coming out in 2010. It should see a reissue, honestly, because I've had this figure for at least a couple of weeks now. And let me just say this, because I'm gonna bring up the 30 centimeter 84 for a comparison. And I kind of gravitate more towards this one. I kind of like this one better more so than the 30, but we'll get to that once I do the size comparison. Um, So let's get up close and personal with this figure. And you know what? Normally I would, you know, shoot it with the camera in the hand, but you know what? I'm just gonna go straight into the review and just pop in some inserts. So first and foremost, let's start with the skin. Three bought light skin, you know, charcoal gray, typical Godzilla um, um, skin texture here. Once again, um, and that's the thing, when it comes to 25 centimeters, 25 centimeter figures and 30 centimeter figures, more often than not, sometimes the 25 centimeters are a little bit more detailed than the 30s. And you know, you can see it in the sculpts. And you probably can add this one to the list because the detail on this 25 centimeter 84 is amazing. Like I said, dark charcoal gray. It really is awesome. The claws are really, really sharp and really thick, reminiscent of the suit in the film. That's one thing about the suit. This was a really menacing and intimidating Godzilla, you know. You know, they tried to get away from the from the goofy superhero that we last saw him from the Showa series, and they came forth with this intimidating, imposing, basically scary looking Godzilla. And and it worked for the film. And, and it worked for them trying to be a far off departure from the superhero persona that he was in the 70s. Um, but yes, the claws are awesome. You know the dorsal plates. Let's go back to the dorsal plates. Um, they increase the normal, normal. Excuse me. They increase the, the numbers of the dorsal plates on Godzilla's back here for this for this suit, and S Plus has replicated this in this sculpt. Um, it's kind of interesting that when you look at the back dorsal plates, his back big main dorsal plate is like here towards the small of his back, towards the lower end of his back. And honestly, this wasn't the first time they actually done that. Actually, the previous suit did that. The seventy five. Um, the 75's biggest dorsal plate was like around the same area right here towards the uh, towards the lower end of his back versus being up here at the middle of, a, of his back, you know. Um, but yes, the, uh, the, the the detail in the dorsal plates is really, really awesome. Uh, off bone white, the color on the dorsal plates on all three rows, you know, they're more pronounced and not jagged um, dorsal plates as you will see on the 67 Godzilla or the 55 Godzilla. Uh, like I said, more round and pronounced. Really is awesome. Now the tail is really, really, really good. Sculpted really, really well. Now it's not as long as a 30, um, but I think it's a good size. You know, maybe it could be just a little bit longer because the Heisei Godzilla um, designs of the suits have real long tails, you know? Um, so the, the tail looks good. Um, the sculpt is really reminiscent. Um, this is the thing. I've heard, like I said, collectors, and um, people who have this figure saying it's an ugly suit, it's not super accurate. But to me, I think when I look at this guy's little sculpt right here in this figure, I first think of when he first attacks the uh, nuclear plant in the film. Uh, that's what I see 
um, when it when it comes to this sculpt. So in my opinion, I think it is super accurate. I know that's kind of like a blasphemous thing to say, but I think that everything is in in the eye of the beholder. There's no facts that says this Godzilla figure. This is this accurate. This Godzilla figure is that accurate? You know, I think that it's all from our in, in, individual interpretations as collectors. And I know a lot of folks tend to gravitate towards the third centimeter when it comes to, to, to the, the Superior 84. But for me, I am going with this one. Um, and the main selling point why I'm going with this one is the face. The face looks so menacing. So menacing. Um, it's not roaring. His mouth and jaws are not open wide open like the 30. Um, it's partially open in a way to show, to show his shark shark like teeth in a way he kind of looks like he's snarling you know which is what the Godzilla the suit did in the film which was God which what Godzilla did in the film anyway there were times where he was snarl just gave him more of a sinister personality even though he wasn't technically evil in my opinion I don't think he was evil um but this school excuse me this sculpt really reflects that and I'm glad it's such a um difference from this sculpt as well as the 30 you know um but yes the face is so amazing and I've also heard folks say this figure kind of looks more like the Cybot, you know, the giant uh, um, Godzilla um, prop that they use for certain scenes in the film. And I can see that to a certain extent, but I think it's very, very little or very, uh, very minuscule. It's, you maybe can see it a little bit in the face, just a little bit, but I think it looks more so like the suit. I really do. I think it looks more so like the suit than the actual 30 centimeter. Um, and once again, it's all subjective. You know, there's no law that says that the 25 centimeter is inferior when it comes to being too accurate over the 30 and vice versa. I'm just giving you my opinion. And in my opinion, I think the 25 centimeter is such a cool, cool scope. Um, in a way, I find it a little bit more accurate than the 30 centimeter. Just, just a certain extent, you know. Um, and I am gravitating towards more towards this one than the 30. Not because I, you know, I got it recently, but... I just like this one better. I really do. Um, but the overall texture of the skin, dorsal plates, tail, the awesome face, the teeth, teeth, all individually sculpted, you know, as far as the tooth, you know, the pose, which is reminiscent of him attacking the, um, or about to attack the nuclear plant in the film. This really is a solid piece, and I'm so glad I got it. I really am. Um, it's, it's amazing. So hopefully X Plus will reissue this, at, reissue this at some point. Like I mentioned, they did reissue the 30. So I don't see why they wouldn't reissue this one. Um, now mind you, they are going to reissue, not, excuse me, not reissue. They are going to issue a Deathful Real 84, which is coming out, um, next month. At the time it's recording, it's September 2nd, 2018. And supposedly the Deathful Real 84s are dropping in October. Um, the standard comes with just Godzilla himself. The red comes with him holding a miniature nuclear reactor from the film, ironically. Um, so I will be getting my hands on that. Uh, so basically towards the tail end of this video, I normally talk about, you know, my my thoughts about the film and stuff like that. But since I will be getting the 84 Death for Real, I'll be covering more about the film in that video. So towards the tail end of this video, when it comes to the commentary portion, I will give you my top three favorite scenes from the 1985 film, you know, or from the 1984 film, whatever. Actually, let me just say this. I actually prefer 85. I actually prefer the 85 version over 84. So I will give you my top three scenes, my top three favorite scenes from Godzilla 1985, you know. So yes, this figure is amazing. You can find one for a good price. There's one on Monorake right now. Um, he's a little bit more expensive than what I got this one for. Um, cause I got this one really for like 150 shipped, which is awesome. Considering the fact that this is scarce, you don't see him that much. And when you do, he's very, very horrendously, horrendously overpriced. The one on Monorake, he's probably at like maybe 260 shipped, you know? So if you want one, go on the, go on Monorake right now and get it. You would not be disappointed. Um, so that's pretty much it, you know, with the sculpt, face, dorsal plate, skin texture. It is such a solid representation of the Godzilla 1984. So let's go with two size comparisons. And once again, I would give you my top three favorite scenes from Godzilla 1985. Let's go with the first size comparison. Okay, folks, this is the first size comparison alongside the Godzilla 1984 25 centimeter. 
I have the Yuji Sakai Godzilla 1991, the Hokkaido Lantern Edition to the left. And to the right, the Yuji Sakai Godzilla 1992. Of course, the one from the left is from Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. And the one from the right is from Godzilla vs. Mothra. But you already knew that. <laughs> if you're watching this, obviously, clearly, uh, you, you know where these uh, Godzilla designs come from. But I just want to just, just show you um, how he scales in comparison to the other um, Godzilla figures. Now, of course, they're from different separate lines. Um, but they kind of like size up well as it was on the film because in 1984, Godzilla was what, 80 meters tall? Then he ballooned to 100 meters tall in King Ghidra and for the rest of the uh, Heisei series. So it kind of works. It does kind of work. Now, mind you, the 84 is kind of pushed up a little bit. So, let me, matter of fact, let me push it back so you can see the real size of it. So, see? See what I'm saying? So that right there is the true size of it. But, you know, if this was really accurate or how it was on film, then, you know, I think this would be, you know, what it was, you know. But as you can see, they look really, really good together. And you can see the evolution of the suits, you know. Um, with the thighs, I mentioned earlier with the thighs and and being a little bit thick, as you can see, they got more pronounced in 91 and they kind of like stayed the same towards 92. Actually, 92 uh, uh, it is a little bit more pronounced also. As a matter of fact, let me just say this. I don't do enough to talk a lot about that figure, the 92. Um, I actually prefer the original 92, but this figure is amazing. It really is. The Sakai 92 is really amazing. Um, I just want to say that. <laughs> but it's not about him. It's about him. Um, so, yeah, they look great together. And once again, like I said, you can see the evolution of the uh, early Heisei suits before he found ice cream. <laughs> no, get me wrong. I ain't knocking that. I ain't knocking that Godzilla got a little bit chunky for Mecha Godzilla, Space Godzilla, and and uh, Destroyer. Actually, Destroyer, you know, because you know I love the Burning Godzilla in terms of figures. Um, the suit had a warm-up on me for a little bit, but uh, I think when it comes to Burning Godzilla, I think the orange kind of offsets the fact that he's chunky. But with 93 and 94, you can tell he's really chunky. But to me, these three represent when Godzilla was at his most and best proportioned when it comes to the Heisei film series, you know? So, and they look great together. All right, so let's go with one size, one more size comparison. We'll, we'll compare this 25 centimeter 84 with the 30 centimeter counterpart. All right, let's go with the last and second size comparison. Okay, folks, this is the last and second size comparison. And alongside the 25 centimeter 84, I have his 30 centimeter counterpart. And they look great together. But once again, like I said, I actually prefer this one. I prefer the 25 centimeter better. Um, there are similarities between the two, obviously, since they're the same Godzilla. Um, you know, with the dorsal plates, the dorsal plates arrangements, arrangement on both is pretty much the same. Um, of course, this one has more of a darker paint scheme, as you can see here. Um, the, the, uh, the sculpts of the tails are obviously different. With the 30 centimeters going more upwards and the 25 is going more down. Um, actually, the arm positions on both are pretty much the same, you know, which is basically reminiscent of how Mr. Kempichiro Satsuma wore the suit since this was his first time portraying Godzilla in a Godzilla film from, you know, coming from playing Hedra and Guy again in the Showa series. He finally takes on the big G in his debut film and and he, do, he does such a great job of conveying menace, just straight up, just just an ominous, sinister feeling whenever Godzilla is around. And Mr. Satsuma captured that in his performance. You know, I believe his best performance is Destroyer. Um, but this performance right here really set the tone for the remainder of the Heisei series. And it made you believe that this guy was truly Godzilla. And I think that's great. Um, but once again, it's pretty much the same in a way. It's just that there are... Um, just differences and once again i've heard folks say that this one looks more like the side by in a way in my opinion i think the NECA, the NECA that that um that came on um, the NECA 84 that um that, that came out he looks more like the side by than this one honestly he's just like a he looks more like a run down side by <laughs> but i do like this one better i do find this one a little bit more suit accurate than this one. I still love it. I still love this one. Because this was actually the first Godzilla figure that I ever bought from X+. Plus. This was my first X Plus purchase. 
So I'm always going to have a soft spot for this one, just like I have a soft spot for 84 overall. Um, but when it comes to accuracy, I kind of lean towards this one, you know. I just think that this one just looks better, you know. And I, and I find it a little bit more superior. I know some folks probably won't agree with that. I know some folks will probably look at the 30 as more superior. And that's fine. Once again, it's all subjective. It really is all subjective. But if you can get both, hey, get both. Because these both, these are both superior Godzilla 1984 pieces. They really are. And um, if you can find one, if not both, and especially if you're a fan of the film, go for it. You would not be disappointed. And speaking of the film... Let's talk about my top three favorite scenes from this awesome Godzilla film. Of course, The Return of Godzilla 1984 or Godzilla 1985. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, folks, I'm back and let's wrap up my thoughts of Godzilla 1985. My top three favorite scenes from the movie in conjunction with the S plus 25 centimeter Godzilla 1984. Once again, I make no bones about the fact that this film, Godzilla 1985, Godzilla 1985, um, is one of my most favorite films. Um, even though it's not on my top 10 list, um, but I have such huge nostalgia for this film. Um, when I was growing up, and of course I detailed this story many times, but I'm going to try to give you a little, little small version of it here. Uh, when I was growing up, my access to Godzilla films were very, very limited. It came on a superstation, you know, known for the monsters, um, Grandpa's Super Scary Saturday. I know y'all out there feel me on that one because uh, I'm sure that a lot of folks watch that show. Um, w WCW television, um, you know, wrestling matches when wrestling was actually really good. <laughs> yeah, and that, yeah, man, that's depressing. <laughs> but hey, but that's another story from another time for us wrestling. Um, but yes, my access to Godzilla films were very, very limited. I only had a few select to, to choose from. Of course, my first one was Godzilla vs. Meg Godzilla vs. Megalon. And then on the Superstation, I was able to see King Kong vs. Godzilla, Monster Zero, Sea Monster, Son of Godzilla, <clears throat> and the original Godzilla. And a couple of them I was able to rent from the video store. And of course you don't know, because back in my day, <laughs> yeah, before Netflix and Hulu and all these online uh, streaming sites where you can just download movies and TV shows, you know, whatever, we had to physically go to video stores and rent them. And there were a few Godzilla tapes, so Godzilla films that came on video um, that I was able to rent from the video store. Um, Godzilla vs. Guy again, Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 1974, uh, and Godzilla 1985 was one of them. And I watched it around the same time. After I watched, you know, Megalon and then I watched more Godzilla films, I watched Godzilla 1985 um, during the midst of me watching all of those Godzilla films. So basically growing up, I got exposed to Godzilla being so many different characterizations, which is why one of the reasons why I love the Showa series so much and why I defend the Showa series. Because um, my main love for the show a series, why I love the show a series so much, besides the fact that the films are very, very colorful, imaginative, and just epic on every single scale possible. But for me, I love how they brought Godzilla to different characterizations throughout the series, from being a serious allegory for the mis misuse of nuclear weapons in the original, from being a villain, a straight up villain in 62 and 64, to an anti-hero in 65 and 66, to a straight up father, fi father figure in 67, to a superhero in 71 and 72. And the Godzilla films I watched during that period basically had Godzilla in every single one of those roles. And which is one of the reasons why I appreciate Godzilla 1980, 1985 a lot. Uh, because they brought Godzilla back to his dark roots. You know, he was no longer this friendly superhero that would come in and take out giant monsters for the sake of humanity. Nope, they figured, hey, we got to scrap that. We got to bring Godzilla back to his serious roots. So they ignored everything that happened from God, from Godzilla Rays again all the way up into Terra Mecha Godzilla. And this film is basically a sequel slash reboot to the original Godzilla film from 1954. And that's fine, you know. I mean, you know, it, it kind of like messed up the continuity a little bit. But I understand why they felt the need to bring Godzilla back to a more serious tone, especially since what we saw him doing last in the latter part of the 70s Showa films, you know? Um, but once again, 
And I make no bones about the fact that, yes, this film, um, 1985, the Americanization of The Return of Godzilla 1984, I like this film better than the original Japanese release. As a matter of fact, I kind of do the same thing with the original. I like Godzilla King of the Monsters more so than the original Godzilla 1954. Once again, I know this blasphemous amongst Godzilla fans and, and Godzilla purists, but for me, these are more nostalgic films for me, and they're more entertaining. And yes, I will agree that the majority of the, God, of the Godzilla films are really are the best when they're left untouched. Like the Japanese cuts of these films are by and large the best versions of the two when it comes to Americanizations. But there are a few Americanizations where I feel made the Japanese films even better, especially from an American entertainment standpoint. Godzilla King of the Monsters is one of them. Godzilla 1985 is one of them, at least for me. King Kong vs. Godzilla, I find the American version better. Godzilla 2000, I find the American version better. You know, Geezer the Three-Headed Monster, I find the American version better. So there are a few examples out there that, yes, the Americanizations of these films are not as bad as some folks like to lead you to believe. And Godzilla 1985 is one of them. But my top three favorite scenes from this from this movie, actually, as I was thinking about this, as I was preparing for this review or preparing for the commentary version, a commentary portion of this video, actually, the three scenes in 1985 are kind of similar to three scenes in Godzilla King of the Monsters. And I'm going to go back and forth as I run them down here. Um, the first favorite scene from Godzilla 1985 of mine is the opening scene. As a matter of fact, two of the uh, uh, of my um, um, favorite scenes up here, two of the three, actually um, doesn't even feature Godzilla on screen. You know, he's implied. You may hear his roar, but he's not present on screen, which made um, which made uh, the storytelling even better. And what the filmmakers did to imply Godzilla's presence made it even that more terrifying. Because rarely Godzilla is viewed upon as scary or whatever. But in a few situations that you can point to, Godzilla has been a terrifying, fearsome monster. And of course, we know what happens in the beginning of the film, 1985, during a, during a bad storm, this fishing trawler comes close to an island. The island basically just explodes in a way. Something rises up, and then we hear Godzilla's roar, and we see the, uh, the crew just tumble all over the boat, and then they cut away to Raymond Burr's eyes. And that scene set the tone for the rest of the film. You know, it really did. It set the tone that, hey, this is not the drop-kicking Godzilla anymore. This is not the flying Godzilla. This is a more serious take. And the fact that Godzilla is not even on screen, the fact you hear his basically dark, just just not evil-sounding roar, but just a more intense-sounding roar, and you don't really see him, is enough to set the tone for the movie that, yes, this movie is going to be a fun ride. Kind of like the original Godzilla King of the Monsters, you know, where you see the ocean and you hear Godzilla's roar. You don't see him, but you just hear his roar. And then it cuts away to a decimated Tokyo. Once again, that set the tone of the film. That this was, was going to be a really, really, really powerful film. And the best was yet to come, you know. So that's my first favorite scene with Godzilla 1985, the opening scene. Now, the second favorite scene is when Godzilla attacks the, uh, the Soviet sub which basically almost started uh, World War III. <laughs> and we all know what happens. A Soviet sub is in the Pacific. They spot Godzilla. They don't really know what it is. They fire two torpedoes at it. Then Godzilla comes on top of it and crushes it. And the intensity of that scene is so amazing. And once again, I think it's better in the American version. It's the fact that, once again, Godzilla's not on screen, but his presence is implied that Godzilla does not have to be on screen for it to be a terrifying moment. And it brings Godzilla back to being a more fierce, fearsome monster. And I like that. And I like, how, I like how they did that during the course of 1985. And again, this scene is akin to when Godzilla comes ashore on Odo Island in Godzilla King of the Monsters. We, we don't know what happens with that. A storm comes in, and then we hear Godzilla's footsteps, and we see him partially you know, trample a house we don't really see him, but we know he's there, and he's there causing destruction. The characters obviously see, uh, know he's there. They see him, but the audience don't. But you want to see him, but they keep him off screen, so his presence and his roar is enough to get you on the edge of your seat. And I think the, the U.S., excuse me, the Soviet attack sub scene conveyed that well in 1985, 
And when Godzilla first comes ashore at night on Odo Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters conveyed that as well. So that's my second favorite scene from Godzilla 1985 when Godzilla attacks the uh, Soviet sub. And my last favorite scene from Godzilla 1985 is when Godzilla finally comes ashore in Tokyo. When he appears in Tokyo Bay and the military is fighting everything they got to try to keep him away from the city. First, the airplane squadron comes in. They're unsuccessful. Then you have a whole bunch of military attack vehicles on this bridge waiting for Godzilla to come. And he pops up, rise up out of the ocean, roaring his defiance at all of them. And they're throwing everything they got at him. And then he kind of snarls. And then he just goes from one side to the next and just blows the whole bridge away with his fire. And just blows up everything. Basically, that was their last line of defense to keep Godzilla from entering the city. If Godzilla were to go through that, then he would be have full access to Tokyo, which he did. And then after he obliterates everybody and he turns back around and he's slowly looking around at the at the decimation that at the devastation that he has caused, and he roars and defies by saying, "Yeah, I'm Godzilla. I'm the king. You can't stop me." <laughs> Once again. Kind of akin to when Godzilla um, attacks Tokyo. Not the first time, but the second time when they install those electrical towers to keep Godzilla away. And he goes through them and then he has full access to Tokyo. Once again, a powerful scene which proves that Godzilla is truly unstoppable. And it's nothing to be messed with or trifled with. So yes, those are my top three favorite scenes from Godzilla 1985. Which brings Godzilla back, like I said, to his dark roots. Which shows... That this Godzilla, or at least Godzilla as a character, has not always been a happy-go-lucky character. He, at some points, has been super serious. He has been evil, like in GMK. You know, and I love the serious Godzilla. I love the villain Godzilla, which is basically what this Godzilla is. He's the antagonist. He's not truly evil, like I said, like with GMK, or maybe Godzilla 1991. But he is still a fearsome, intimidating monster. And Godzilla 1985 did a great job of conveying that. And I'm going to stop with the commentary portion of Godzilla 1985 right here. Because once again, like I said, when I get the Death Row Real Rip version of Godzilla 1984, I would then talk more about Godzilla 1985 or the return of Godzilla 1984. And we'll have a fun time with that. You know what I mean? So that pretty much concludes my review of the X Plus 25 centimeter Godzilla 1984 Standard Edition from the epic film that kickstarted the Godzilla Heisei film series, The Return of Godzilla 1984, or Godzilla 1985. If you have any questions, highlight me down in the comment section or hit me up on Facebook via Leslie P. Chambers. We'll definitely go from there. Yes, I'm loving this figure. I really am. Let me give a huge shout out to Brutalzilla. He's like the biggest Godzilla 1984 um, fan I know. He's a really cool friend of, friend of mine, a brother, brother from another mother. So I dedicated this review to you as well, Matt Jacobson, Gojira 851. You know, y'all really cool with me. Congrats, Gojira 851, from scoring that 84 from G-Fest. Congratulations. So I, did, I dedicate this video to both of y'all fine gentlemen, you know. And once again, this figure is on Monorake right now for a relatively good price. You know, if you're not trying to spend three, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars for this figure, go on Mondarake right now and get this figure. You will not be disappointed. Or maybe hopeful, or be hopeful that Xbox will reissue this down the road. Next year will mark the 35th anniversary of Godzilla 1984. You know, so maybe they will reissue this, reissue this figure at some point. I just find it very un unbelievable when Xbox has reissued almost every existing figure under the sun. This is one they have not gotten to yet, and I find that really, really amazing. But hopefully they will get on top of this and realize there is a demand for it, and they will get this figure out to you as soon as possible. But if not, go on Monday Rocket right now and get this figure you're not be disappointed with. The S Plus 25 centimeter Gazo 1984. All right? So I thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and I will see you all again on this figure and move review. All right? Y'all take it easy.
Nature has a way sometimes of reminding man of just how small he is. She occasionally throws up the terrible offsprings of our pride and carelessness to remind us of how puny we really are in the face of a tornado, an earthquake, or a Godzilla. The reckless ambitions of man are often dwarfed by their dangerous consequences. For now, Godzilla, that strangely innocent and tragic monster, has gone to Earth. Whether he returns or not, or is never again seen by human eyes, the things he has taught us remain.